Hey Monica, I am grateful this week for deadlines because if I didn't have to make a video today, the idea I came up with a couple of days ago would have been in the planning and uh, considering how to execute phase for probably a couple of months. So here it is, just uh, blasted out on a video really quick. I was thinking about ownership and how on a high level, like a PhD level of ownership, there's yours and then there's mine. And if yours and mine are in a Venn diagram, there's an overlap where it's ours. And then somewhere off to the side is another Venn diagram and it says theirs. And then there's just a lonely circle that says somebody's. And these are all encompassed by one really big circle that says everybody's and outside of that that says nobody's. And on the surface, you know, we, we all speak the English language. We all know all these ownership um, directives, but really I don't think we understand mine and not mine. That is a very basic foundational element to ownership that if you can get it right, I think clears up a lot of, um, a lot of problems in life. In fact, my mom had this saying that my sister and I were repeating to each other in unison on a phone call this week that, um, where she says, there are two kinds of problems in this world, my problem and not my problem. And as, as I've gotten older, it's occurred to me that she said this because it is really easy to mix those two up. It is really easy to take on problems that are not mine, and it's really easy to neglect the ones that I actually have. The, um, the, uh, another way of saying it is the, uh, the serenity prayer, you know, the courage to accept, the courage to change the things I can, the serenity to accept the things I can't, and the wisdom to tell the difference. So in understanding mine and not mine, these are very distinct circles. There is, there is not an overlap yet. We don't want to complicate it with an hour. We're not ready for that. You start with the very simple mine and not mine. And in the not mine category is um, an old Polish proverb, which if I remember it's old and it's Polish and it's a proverb, is not my circus, not my monkeys. And, you know, in contrast, in the mine circle would be my circus and my monkeys. Now, you'd think that it would be pretty clear that whatever your circus is and whatever your monkeys are and whatever their circus is and whatever their monkeys are, but it's really easy to get into other people's business. It's really easy to get caught up in things that aren't yours. Like, uh, say if you're in the circus business of being a mom, and therefore you would have to consider, well, what are your monkeys? What are the monkeys that belong to that circus? Your, my first guess, and, and probably a lot of people's would be, well, your kids, especially if they are a lot like monkeys, it's very easy to think of them as the monkeys that belong in the mom circus. But those are not the monkeys that belong in the mom circus. The monkeys that are the responsibility of the mom circus are the mom monkeys, the mom behaviors, the mom reactions, the, the best mom moments and the worst mom moments and, and how do you show up as a mom when that happens, when your child does this, when they do that, what kind of mom are you? And in preparation for this, what kind of mom are you? And you know, enduring this, what kind of mom are you? These are the, the kind of monkeys that are our monkeys. And sometimes we can neglect those monkeys and instead focus on other monkeys, like maybe our kids' monkeys when they throw a tantrum. And we don't mind our own monkeys and end up yelling at them. So in that case, you know, it feels like their monkeys belong to our circus and then we feel really bad that we sent them bad monkeys to their circus and everybody's circuses and monkeys get all mixed together and it's just a mess. The wisdom to tell the difference is really key. Who owns what monkeys?